Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another Action V review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarland DC Multiverse Collector's Edition Green Lantern Corps member. Not only that, but this is the Platinum Chase variant. This comes with two different heads, allowing you to make Arcus Chumuk and the Green Man. This is a great addition to your Green Lantern collection. I love the fact that they're making, not exactly army builders, but specific characters, and the Platinum version allows you to make two more of them. I wear this a big bad toy store, glad I didn't miss it, so let's take a look at the packaging. At the top, 22 moon parts, McFarland Toys, ages 12 plus, McFarland Collector's Edition, DC Multiverse Green Lantern, McFarland Platinum Edition. Here he is in the package, we have, looks like a total of 8 hands, 2 of which have energy effects, 2 different heads, a lantern shield, lantern battery, collector's card, and display stand. One side of the package, Green Lantern from Green Lantern Corps. This is the 22nd figure in the Collector's Edition subline. Other side, Green Lantern. At the bottom, it looks like Big Bad Toy Store covered up the regular barcode with their own internal barcode. Not that either one would help you find the Platinum version. And to the back side, here's a replica of Tales of the Green Lantern Corps number three. So with no further ado, let's open them up. And I did get two of these Green Lantern figures. That way, I can have Arcus Chumuk and the Green Man. All right, now that we've got these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. They come with quite a bit of cool stuff. We have the display stand, collector's card, a lantern battery, a construct lantern shield, a total of six alternate hands, totaling eight interchangeable hands, two of which have lantern stuff coming out of them. Pretty cool accessories, but the coolest thing about these guys is we have two different heads. One head is Arcus Chumuk, and the other one is the Green Man. Two Green Lantern Corps members. So let's talk about them for a second. Arcus Chumuk is the sort of wolf-looking guy on the left. He was first introduced in the 50s. He's from planet Tome 6. There are warlike people that believe in honor above all else. Kind of think Klingons. There was a Green Lantern named Reaver that was in charge of his sector. Arcus Chumuk fought Reaver and beat him. And then the ring went to him. As custom with his people, he ate Reeves' remains, and then he was taken back to the Green Lantern Corps and put on trial. And they found out he wasn't really a bad guy, just had different customs, so they kept him in the Green Lantern Corps with probationary status. And then on the right, we have the Green Man. He looks like, you guessed it, a Green Man. He's from the planet of Uxor. He rebelled against its anti-individualism, and then was offered a chance to join the Green Lanterns. He accepted, but in turn, he was never allowed to re-enter the system where his planet was. He ended up hiring these people called the Omega Men to attack a nearby world, and then was kicked out of the Green Lantern Corps. He ended up joining the Omegas after that, but this is the version where he was a Green Lantern Corps member. So let's take a quick look at them. So, here's Chumuk. Looks kind of like a werewolf, big fangs, pointed ears, fur all over him. He's got a green domino mask. And the paint job is a little bit different on the Planet version. They have sort of the old school Green Lantern look. Almost looks like a wife beater in the middle there. Of course, Green Lantern logo right in the center. Powering on his hand. Double jointed elbows and knees. That textured Kyle Rayner body. And then for the Green Man. Pretty cool looking head sculpt. He also has a green domino mask. All those little wart type things on top of his head. Wrinkles on his forehead. Strange looking mouth. Kind of lizardy looking. They really did an excellent job on all four of these guys' head sculpts. He has the same sort of older school looking Green Lantern outfit. Everything else is exactly the same, but a different head. And I think that's a really cool way to already build your Green Lantern core. And a closer look at Arcus Chumuk's face and head sculpt. It looks pretty good. The domino mask, the hair, the fangs. Good sculpt and good paint job to match. And a closer look at the Green Man as well. They both have fantastic head sculpts. I mean, look at all the detail in there. The paint, the sculpt, the texturing. It's all very well done. And a closer look at his power ring. I appreciate the fact that it's not just a green dot paint onto his hand. It's actually sculpted onto there. And then here are the figures, broken down as far as they can go, with all their removable parts detached. Now let's check out his accessories, starting off with the boring stuff. Here's a display stand, typical McFarland display stand we've seen endless times before. 
The only difference is it's part of the collector's edition, so it has a silver DC at the bottom. Very thin, very basic. And for his collector's card, as you can see, it's a replica of Green Lantern Core number three. You can see the entire Green Lantern Core, Hal Jordan, Arcus, Tomar Ray. I think we got the Green Man in the back there. Evan Sewer is actually dead because his ring was given to Hal Jordan. McFarlane Collector's Edition. On the back, there is a description. If you want to read that, pause now. Now let's look at his hands. He has a total of eight of them. Five right hands, three left hands, two of which have energy effects. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are his fists. Then, with his second pair of hands, this is a pair of default hands. They would look good, relaxed at his sides. He has two more regular hands. His right hand is a flight hand, totally flat. His left hand is a gripping hand. And he has two additional right hands. This one has an energy effect, and it's shaped like a guardian. He's communicating with the guardians, which are the leaders of the Green Lantern Corps. It's actually pretty cool. And there's one additional hand. This one has the lantern energy coming out. It looks really cool and be great for combat scenes. Here are both them using their lantern rings in combat, backing each other up. Here's his energy shield. This is a construct made of lantern energy. It has a lantern logo in the middle. It's cast in semi-transparent green plastic, and it clips along their wrists. Here's Arcus using the energy shield. Looks pretty cool. Touches to the wrist pretty nicely, and you can use it for any other Green Lantern figures that you have. Here's his lantern battery. The lantern rings don't have unlimited power. They have to recharge the battery from time to time. It's cast in a semi-transparent plastic, which I don't really agree with because it's not a construct, but I guess one could argue it's glowing and energy while it's charging the ring. Here's the Green Man holding the lantern battery. I've had a lot of people request that I put the Hal Jordan DC Classics head on this body. I imagine this is something McFarlane will eventually put out. It's a no-brainer. That way he has a consistent suit and color with Kyle Rayner, John Stewart, etc. They haven't done Hal Jordan on this textured lantern suit body yet. And it looks really good. Seems like an easy single release for McFarlane. Now I wanted to check out the differences and similarities between the two Platinum figures, Arcus Chumak and Green Man, and then the regular Collector's Edition figures on the right, Tomar Ray and Abin Sewer. And it's 100% the same body, same sculpt, same articulation, just a different paint job and different heads, so let's take a look. So, like I said, the heads are totally different. The bodies are exactly the same, but this one has more of an old-school outfit, kind of has the sort of wife-beater look to it on the green. This one, I think, has a more modern outfit with the shoulders, etc. I kind of wish they were consistent. I appreciate some differences, but I kind of prefer this one. I don't know. There's pros and cons to both of them. I can see people swapping stuff around, maybe putting this diaper onto this guy, blah, 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 whatever. But it's cool that they have the same textured body and there's consistency with the color scheme among your Green Lantern Corps. Now, the Green Lantern Corps doesn't all have the same costumes. There is variation to them, so it's all good. And if you want to have all four of these guys and you only locate one Platinum, you can definitely do it as long as you get three of the regulars you'll have enough heads to make all four of these characters. And this is the same body that was first introduced with the Kyle Rayner Green Lantern, but was also used with many other characters. The coloring is a little bit more consistent with Jon Stewart here. It's the same textured body. This one has what I call the more modern outfit versus the old school outfit. Beyond that, it's 100% the same but it allows you to make your Green Lantern core. I think this is one of the smartest things McFarlane has done. They could have made a super deluxe figure, or one came with all the heads, but of course we have the Platinum Chase. Here are all the different McFarlane DC Multiverse figures that utilize this base body. There are 12 of them. Sinestro, Jon Stewart, Arcus Chumuk, Green Man, Tomar Ray, Evan Sewer, and Kyle Rayner. I want to see how Jordan on this body as well. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at the figure, their accessories, let's check out their height. So from bottom to the top of the head, Arcus about 7.2 inches tall, and Green Man about 7.1, which can translate to just over 18 centimeters. And for the articulation, which is exactly the same on both figures. So, starting with the head here, you can rotate side to side, you can look up and down a little bit, tilt his head one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint, goes out a little bit more than 90 degrees. Up, down, around. He's got the butterfly ring between his shoulder and chest, increase the range of motion, and cover the large gap that would be there. Bicep cut, double jointed elbows, 
his wrist can rotate and it's hinged. Ball joint is torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another one is waist, rotate around, forward and back. Between the two, good range of motion, you get more out of the waist than the torso in this guy. Legs complete as splits, McFarland style hip joints. Rotation is okay. Legs go forward about that far, back not much. Double jointed knees and the ankles forward and back. Rotate, tilt, rock, and toe articulation. Here's a look at these lantern core members teamed up defending their sector. And here's a look at the other lantern core members doing the same. Here are all four of these green lantern members. The core united. And here they are utilizing their energy, ready for combat. Now let's talk about mount. Next is some other action figures. Starting off with some other Green Lantern figures. Here are these two Platinum Green Lantern Corps members, Arcus Chumuk and Green Man. Next to the regular versions, Evan Sewer and Tomar Ray. Four new additions to the Green Lantern Corps. Pretty cool. And here they are next to Hal Jordan, both classic and modern. Then, next to Jon Stewart, both classic and modern. And now, with Kyle Rayner and Kilowog. And here, with Alan Scott and Sinestro as Green Lanterns. Then, with a couple of Batman as Green Lantern figures. Here's sort of your cohesive Lantern Corps. These ones all look pretty similar. Same size, shapes, same shade of green, etc. Probably more appropriate to have the modern Hal and Jon Stewart here, but I think these looked better together as a group. Eventually, I'm sure we're going to get Hal Jordan on this body. And then here's every single McFarland DC Multiverse Green Lantern figure they've made so far. The next one to come out is starting to pop up at Walmarts right now. That's a gold label Hal Jordan figure with a metallic paint job. Looking forward to getting him. And then I believe the next Collector's Edition wave is going to have Simon Boz, another Green Lantern. And then I heard the wave after that is going to have Guy Gardner. He is definitely probably the biggest glaring omission so far. Here they are, next to a couple of other different Green Lanterns that I don't have for McFarlane. We have Jessica Cruz by Mattel on the left, and then Chip from DC Direct on the right. I'm sure eventually McFarlane will get around to making these characters. Since they're allegedly doing Simon Paws and Guy Gardner, that'll make Jessica Cruz the next most needed Green Lantern. Here they are, next to McFarlane's Yellow Lantern Sinestro Corps members. We have two versions of Sinestro and Batman. And here they are, with some Sinestro Corps members from different companies. Scarecrow and Batman by Mattel and a couple of Predators by NECA. And now, with McFarland's Red Lanterns, Atrocitus and Batrocitus, and here, next to McFarland's Black Lanterns, then next to the Blue Lantern, Kyle Rayner, next with the White Lantern, Captain Boomerang. Here are all the different McFarland Lantern figures. Black Lanterns, White Lanterns, Red Lanterns, Yellow Lanterns, Blue Lanterns, and Green Lanterns. I can see them really beefing up the Black, White, Red, and Yellow Lantern core. And then there's others I can make. I remember orange. And probably more colors I can't think of. Here are a bunch of different Green Lantern villains McFarland has made. So here's the McFarland Collector's Edition Wave 1. Every single Collector's Edition figure has a Platinum Chase variant. Here are both the regular and Platinum Chase variants of the first appearance Superman, the Abyss, and Alan Scott Green Lantern. And here's the second wave of Collector's Edition figures both regular and platinum versions of Firestorm, Hawkman, and Sinestro. Then, the third wave of Collector's Edition figures. We have the Death and Return of Superman, Captain Carrot, Batman as Green Lantern, and Wonder Woman. Here's the fourth wave. This wave consisted of Penguin, Starfire, and Captain Boomerang. And here's the fifth wave of McFarlane Collector's Edition figures. Both the regular and platinum chase variants of Sergeant Rock, Connor Kent Superboy, and Manga Batman. Here's the sixth wave of McFarland Collector's Edition figures. Red Hood, Ragman, Clock King, and Agent Liberty. And finally, here's the seventh wave of McFarland Collector's Edition figures. Both the regular and Platinum Chase variants of The Dark Knight Returns Batman, Huntress, and some Green Lantern Corps members. We have Tomar Ray, Evan Sewer, Arcus Chumuk, and the Green Man. And since the Cyborg Superman is a Platinum Chase variant, I wanted to take a look at all the different McFarland DC Multiverse Platinum Chase variants out there. Here are all the sort of older Platinum Chase variants. Gold, bronze, 
unpainted, and then some newer versions. And here are all the more modern McFarland DC Multiverse Planet of Chase variants. I'm fully caught up, still waiting on my Dr. Time to come in. I'm sure here within a week or two there will be more planets to chase down, but here are all the recent releases. I am still looking for one more Platinum, Collector's Edition, Red Hood, Ragman, and Cock King for my unopened collection. Now let's check them out. Next to some other recently released McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here they are next to the Target exclusive Gold Label, Sinestro and Parallax Armor, and Commander Steel. Here are these Green Lantern members. Next to the most recent Joe Bryce Wave, Hush, Harley Quinn, and the Last Night on Earth Batman. And here they are, next to the most recent Page Puncher Wave. Both the regular Planet of Chase variants of the Rebirth Deathstroke and the Damien Wayne Robin. Then, next to the most recent Platinum Wave, The Question, Shining Knight, and Effigy. And now, next to the Dawn of the DC Red Hood and the Rebirth Cyborg, here's Arcus and Green Man. Next to the Michael Go Alfred that came with the Batman Forever Bound Beal, the McFarland Toy Store exclusive Jonah Hex, and the GameStop exclusive Frostbite Deathstroke. And here they are, next to the Batman Forever Wave, Collect to Build a Nightmare Bat. Then, with the previous Platinum Wave, Batman Begins, Lucius Fox, Flash Movie Batfleck, Hugo Strange's Batman, and Bullseye Batman. And now, with the most recent Batman Wave, both the regular and Planet of Chase variants of the Batman Reborn, Dick Grayson Batman, the Adam West Batman, and the world's finest Fusion Batman Superman. And finally, next to the Walmart exclusive Gold Label, Vampire Shazam, and Max Mercury. Now let's check them out. Next to some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how they fit in, both scale and style-wise, in case you don't know which lines you can mix them with. Since they're McFarland toys, they're typically a 7-inch scale, I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect. They work way smaller. But first, let's check them out with some of the McFarland Toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all for McFarland Toys, all 7 inch scale, and now with some Jack specific wrestling figures and some Diamond Select toys. Here they are, next to a jar of pickles. And here they are, next to some DC Direct and NECA Green Lantern figures. Then, with both some Mattel and Jazz Wars wrestling figures. And now, with some Mezco and Mattel DC figures. Next, with some Mafex and Hasbro Marvel Legends. And finally, with some SH figure arts and Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. So for all, these are some pretty cool Green Lantern figures. I think it's a really clever idea, making them sort of army builders. I don't think army builder is the right term because these are two specific characters, and army builders are just generic and you can get as many as you want. I think the regular pack with Avin Sewer and Toma Ray is a little bit better than this one. But they're all really, really well done. These are just more obscure characters, a little bit less important to add to the core. I think Arcus Chumuk and Green Man both look really good. I've definitely seen Arcus before, but Green Man doesn't really look that familiar to me. Definitely seen Toma Ray and Avin Sewer in many comics. If I were to rate these guys, probably going to give them a 7. I mean, there's a lot of reuse here, but it works. It's sort of like a military uniform. Consistency, I like it. The accessories are plentiful. Sculpt and paint shop is nice. I like the texturing on this body. And articulation is everything you'd expect from a McFarland figure. They're really nice. Like I said, I think I like the regular ones just a tad better. But I really do love the obscure characters, and I'm really happy to have these in my core. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to save the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you real soon.